Hey yo, and what is up guys? Thank you so much for joining us once again in this very, very heavy news cycle all of a sudden, leading us into this weekend's very big SummerSlam and NXT TakeOver Brooklyn events. We've got breaking news, very, very exciting and big breaking news on the return to wrestling by Mr. Daniel Bryan. And we also have a little tidbit of a story about the legit boss, Sasha Banks, stopping by my favorite local independent wrestling school. And we are going to talk about all of that right here and right now on the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show. Let's do this. <laughs> What is up, wrestling fans? Thank you so much once again for joining me here on another edition of the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show's breaking news reports as we have just become informed of the two stories that we talked about at the top of the broadcast. My name is Nick Nightmare. This is the World Heavyweight Champion of Microphones Blue, the Maniac Snowball, and we are very happy to have you here with us today. Thank you once again for joining us. Today is very, very good for me to be doing this in a positive light. We have been so negative over the past few videos. We've been defensive. We've been angry. We're not going to be that way today because these two stories that we are going to talk about today are absolutely fantastic and they make me special sparkle on the inside like little Miss Bliss used to back in her NXT days. We are going to get right to the news right now. Sasha Banks has found herself suddenly in the spotlight for SummerSlam as she's training with former TNA star Amazing Red to prepare for it. In a video posted by WWE, Sasha Banks talked about training with Red at House of Glory's Wrestling School, which is something she has done for the past three SummerSlam weekends. Sasha says, and we quote, I came here two years ago for NXT Brooklyn against Bayley. I had so many ideas in my mind and I needed a ring to train in. I hooked up with Amazing Red and he taught me so much. Banks then spoke of Bailey's injury and how she was dealing with the opportunity. She says, It sucks when you find out your best friend is injured. Trust me, it hurt my heart, but I should have had it all along. She promised that she would make the most of this SummerSlam at the Barclays Center, which she has not had had the best streak with in the past, saying, I haven't won there yet in Brooklyn. NXT Brooklyn against Bailey, SummerSlam last year. It's something to me that I have to prove myself. This is absolutely fantastic. This has brought House of Glory. You guys know that I've been singing the praises of House of Glory, and I have absolutely 110% committed myself to making my path into this school, it's going to be a tough journey. And not because of the schooling in itself, because I'm not going to go be a wrestler. That's ridiculous, right? I'm going to be 40 years old. That time has way, that sun has set a long time ago. We're going to just try to be involved in the wrestling industry. And we're going to start right here. It's right here. It's like five minutes from my house. Sasha Banks was five minutes away as she went to go train and prepare for her, her upcoming match against Alexa Bliss. Obviously, you see where my loyalties lie and who I am voting for in this scenario. But I cannot be happier that she has done this and has brought House of Glory into the public eye. I hope to do that with you guys on a more regular basis. And listen, let's be real. It's it, you have to pay to play. You know, like, you can't go to school if you're not working. And my particular job, not only does it fucking suck, it does not allow me a lot of personal time. And it's the hardest thing about this whole journey is going to 
be finding a way to fit House of Glory into my already ridiculous schedule. But we're going to find a way to do it because you cannot measure passion. And as long as you're getting paid, you can play. You know, think about it like it's like joining a softball league. Or like going bowling with your friends. You know, they put on a show once a month. And I want to be a part of it. And in order to do that, I have to go to this school. We're going to make it happen, you guys. You're going to see me at House of Glory sometime in the near future. Bank on it. Just like Sasha Banks is banking on this training from Amazing Red to help her overcome my five feet of fury favorite. My my favorite five feet of fury. That would have came off a little bit better. But um, I hope she does not do that. Although I am very grateful that she's put House of Glory's name out there. They have been featured now on WWE uh, website. They have this video up. It's being talked about all over the internet. It's absolutely fantastic for House of Glory. Congratulations to you guys. And thank you again to Sasha Banks for being so open about uh, how she gets ready and how she trains and where she did it. And she did it, like I said, five minutes from my door. Had I had the money to join up last month the way I kind of wanted to... uh, I would have been there for this, and it would have been fucking epic. Alright? But I I failed. Much like SmackDown failed Baron Corbin. And, uh, you know, we're gonna get there. We'll be there. I promise. But (laughs) that's a non-issue. That's not even news. It's just, you know, I get excited talking about it. And um, I'm, I'm glad that it's being showcased in this light. But that's not really why you are all here. You are not here to hear me talk about my ambitions for House of Glory and how I need to save and work and be a fucking normal human being while I do all of this. You are here to hear the news about Daniel Bryan and his almost inevitable return as according to his wife, Brie Bella. The baby birdie mama came out today It has been 18 months since Daniel Bryan has retired from pro wrestling. But his wife, Brie Bella, says that she knows for a fact he will find a way to return to the ring thanks to a new medical treatment. Brie was asked about Bryan's wrestling future on From the Top Rope this week, and the new mom revealed that Daniel began looking for treatments to heal his brain weeks after retiring. She explained from that moment which was pretty much two years ago, he has been doing every kind of testing to every kind of experiment you can imagine for the brain. And he actually found one. It's this oxygen hyperbaric chamber or something. End quote from Brie Bella. I don't, I don't think I would <laughs> describe it like that. The treatment is called hyperbaric oxygen therapy an alternative form of medicine that, according to their website, is the use of high-pressure oxygen as a drug to treat basic pathopsychologic processes and their diseases. Let's just double-check that. Pathophys... Ah, see, I didn't say that right. Pathophysiologic processes. Jesus Christ. If you're a doctor or a scientist, how do you fucking do this? I mean, I guess it would be like a musician reading a sheet of music. Like, you just see the word and you just fucking know it probably from seeing the first three letters, even though it's pretty much a repetition of the first three letters like five times just mixed and matched. These fucking medical terms, absolutely ridiculous. Holy shit. Props to you guys in the medical field and science field. Unbelievable. Sorry about that. (laughs) Bree claims Brian has already undergone 40 treatments across the country and said she'll fully support his return if doctors give him that green light. She says, and we quote, I told Brian, you do have a daughter, so always remember that. But if the doctors finally give you that green light, go. This is your dream and your passion. You have one life to live, and I will never hold you back. She also added, because I love to wrestle, I would hate it if someone told me that I can't do it. And if the WWE doesn't allow it, then I told him, go somewhere else. That's all on you. Obviously, he would love to be able to get back in the WWE ring. 
but I know for a fact my husband is going to find his way back into the ring. He honestly is. End quote. Holy shit. Why am I reacting this way? Well, first of all, I said this. I've called this from when he started talking shit with The Miz on Talking Smack, and you could just see the fire in his eyes that he wants to get back and do what he loves to do. And I made it a point to say, he is just going to write out his contract and finish up with this, with the terms of this deal, and he's going to go somewhere else. Maybe New Japan. Maybe he could be anti-Bullet Club. I don't see Daniel Bryan being in the Bullet Club, but he would be a great foil to every single person that is a member of the Bullet Club. He could go sign with GFW for all we know and maybe try his luck in the six sides. Maybe he'll he'll go to progress. Maybe he'll go to Ring of Honor, which might be the most logical of all of the choices that I've said. He may just go back and play with the guys down in Ring of Honor. Bubba Ray did it. You know, he's got people down there he could work with. Adam Cole's coming up to the WWE. They're definitely going to need some big-name stars, and this man wants to wrestle. If I were the WWE in this scenario, you do you really need to assess this whole situation and understand what you have. This is a man that, as a general manager, comes out and gets a bigger reaction than your entire roster. Entire roster roster. He's a man that has been given so much and has had every single one of those things that were given to him taken away like that. He is a true underdog story. He's something every single one of us as fans can relate to and we have a love for Daniel Bryan that you cannot even explain. Maybe some of you don't. Maybe some of you hate his goat face. Maybe you hate his beard. Maybe you hate his wife. Maybe you hate that he's on Total Divas. Maybe you think he's exposing the business. I can tell you all to go scratch. And I wanted to say something much worse, but I'm trying to be nice today. Like I said, we're in a good mood and we're not going off on nasty tangents here. If you don't like Daniel Bryan, you're fucking insane. I'm sorry. That's the nicest way I could put it. And this man is almost a true American story. He worked so hard and earned his way to achieve his goal and then had it taken away from him through forces beyond his control. Although all of us were behind him, he had no choice but to walk away due to the company's decision. And now we have him in this role and it's obvious he's preparing himself He's adapted a new wrestling style, which is much less impactful for himself, and he's going to be able to perform at Daniel Bryan level in this new style. He's excited about it. He cannot wait to wipe his feet on those, on that apron again. He can't wait, and neither can I. And if they were smart, and they really took a step back and say, all right, what do we got here? What are we about to lose here? I would throw all the fucking money in the world at him. I would give him Brock Lesnar money. Because at least this guy's going to get that money and wrestle for you. You're going to probably have a hard time stopping him from wrestling. Unless the WWE are truly cowards and chicken shits and, and want nothing to do with any type of a situation where, in which this man gets hurt again. And maybe sustains a concussion that possibly can do some serious damage that's probably what they're thinking. They're just trying to cover their own asses. I say in that scenario, you make this man sign a liability agreement where you wash your hands of anything that happens to him. You make it public knowledge. You let everybody know, listen, we're not really 100% on board with this, but he signed this paper which says that we are not held accountable. Daniel Bryan is allowed to do what he wants on our roster. If he gets hurt, it's on him. And we have... No responsibility in the matter. Here's the paperwork. Boom. And the whole issue goes away. The man can wrestle. If he hurts himself, he hurts himself. It's on him. This is his decision. And we move on. And what you're going to end up seeing is a new evolution of Daniel Bryan. The, if the 
reinvention of Daniel Bryan. That's the word I was looking for. And the crowd's going to eat it up. And we are going to get the chance to see matches like Kurt Angle versus Daniel Bryan. That match alone makes me just want to explode. It just makes me want my whole head just just, just kill me now. Just take my take my money. My wallet's over here. I'll, I'll give it to you. Holy shit. Daniel Bryan versus Kurt Angle. WrestleMania 35. WrestleMania 34. If you want to pull the trigger on it. Come on. Holy cow. You want to sell WrestleMania? There's your money match. AJ Styles versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Brock Lesnar versus Samoa Joe one-on-one. Daniel Bryan versus Kurt Angle. Oh, man. Give me that. Give me that right now. I'll fucking eat it up. I hope to God that they are smart enough to allow this man to do what he wants to do. And pay him well. So that... In case it does go a way that none of us want it to go, he'll have the money to take care of a little birdie. That's all there is to it. I don't see why it's so complicated. Fuck the WWE's doctors. Fuck what they say. They don't know nothing. Look how often these guys have been getting hurt. How good are they really doing their job? They're not fucking taking care of these guys' bodies at all. I say send the rest of them... To this hyperbaric fucking psychosuperlogical whatever the hell the word was chamber and and maybe it'll help fucking everybody. Maybe Daniel Bryan's onto something that maybe even helps some of the veterans from the NFL. Who knows? Let's hope that that's the case, because I would love nothing else than to be doing this once again while he's wrestling. Because as much as I enjoy him as a general manager. Because he's pretty funny, he's witty, and he's, you know, does his little cute dad thing, and he's being this, uh, you know, really white guy kind of thing with the Usos last week. Was, you know, he's got it. He's Daniel Bryan, bro. Do it. Just like we say at the beginning of the show, let's do it. Get it done. Do it. Do it. Do it. Thank you, guys. So much. That's all we got for today. We have got so much more shit coming for you guys on this channel. Later on today, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard New York City time. We've got the NXT Preview and Prediction Show going up live Friday, August the 18th. I think I said later today. Today is now Thursday as I'm doing things all a little bit in advance, being that I'm not going to be home much this weekend. I almost forgot to re-mention the House of Glory. This Friday, I'm meeting Bret the Hitman Hart. I'm seeing the amazing Red go one-on-one with Anthony Gangone. I'm seeing Stefan Bonner versus Matt Riddle. I'm seeing the New York Wrecking Crew take on my favorite caveman friend and his superhero guy, tag team partner, and I apologize that I forgot your guys' names. I'm really sorry. But... That is going to do it for this one. Like I said, so much more coming. SummerSlam preview. SummerSlam review. NXT review when I get home. House of Glory review from Friday night. It's been a fucking crazy week. And who knows what stories will come for me to cover for you. Thank you guys so much. I am Nick Nightmare. This is is Blue the Snowball Microphone. This has been the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we are out of here, and we will see you next time, right here, on the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show. See you guys later.